Good morning. Welcome to Nichols Retirement Empire, where the adventure continues and continues and goes on and on and never stops and never shuts up. The adventure just keeps going. Would you please? Anyway, welcome. And um, I'm, I'm having a good time going back and watching these old videos from when I started the channel when I was still working. And uh, one thing it's made me realize is that um, I've, I'm officially old because I don't have anything else to say. I have said it all. I've used all the words and now all I'm doing is repeating things I've already said. There's nothing new. There's nothing unique. It's all just repetition of the stuff. Like when I look at my dad and he's telling me something for the and I always wonder why is he telling me something he has told me 75 times before and it's because he's run out of that, that's it that's what he's got and uh, I always want to look at him and go you know you've told me this right I mean like you realize when we were driving out here you told me this and now that we're driving back you're telling me the same thing about this but anyway let's watch my I think this was my fourth video and see what I had Hey, good morning. It's uh, day 1,000. Oh my God. It's day 6,000. <laughs> good morning. It's day 1,300. Stop. Good morning. Day 6,137. 33 days left with students uh, until I am retired. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know, even though I'm doing these videos at work, I don't want you to feel like I'm, um, you know, stealing time from my uh, from my employer. I do get here uh, about 45 minutes early every day, I guess, you know, because I'm old. You get, old people get everywhere early, I guess, because when I was a kid um, and I was driving, I always, you know, had to plan for my car to break down. So if my car broke down, I need to be able to get, if I had to get somewhere an hour early, and plus all the old men, you know, when I was growing up, uh, were all in World War II in Vietnam and stuff. And they would pretty much, I'll tell you that you had to be somewhere 30 minutes earlier. You were late. You know, if you're on time, you were late. You had to be there early. So, Okay. Apparently I was just learning to edit. My first two or three videos were totally unedited. And in general, they were unedited. And if I didn't say something the way I wanted to say it, I would go back and I would just do the whole thing over again. Um, but usually they were fairly short. This is the first one that's like five or six minutes long. And I would, I would get to work way before everybody else uh, because I knew that if I was at work early, nobody else would be there and I could do things I needed to do uh, and not be disturbed. So I was a get to work early person. Uh, anyway, I always get here early. Actually, I get here about an hour early uh, when you take into consideration that everybody else that um, works here it's supposed to get here at 7.45, gets here at 8. So, uh, um, you know, compared to them, I'm an hour early. But um, anyway, uh, just want to let you know I wasn't uh, stealing company time here. Um, anyway, we got all our uh, meetings done yesterday for testing. Um, so that was my last testing training session. And I have to say that the other administrators are uh, pretty much walking you know they're they're watching me like a hawk um i guess they think i'm gonna mess something up or whatever here in these last days it's kind of cool because um you know i don't have to worry about a whole lot uh like for example uh yesterday the only part that i had in the whole testing session was um and it was about an hour and a half long <laughs> every meeting was an hour and a half and the only thing that i would do is uh every once in a while i would make a joke and you know then they had to, you know act like they wanted me to quit talking and then um there was this part where i would talk about uh during the test uh during the 10 minute you know the 10 minute break between the testing sessions that it was not a bathroom break and that they should not send their kids to the bathroom and if they did send their kids to the bathroom then i was going to be in the hall and i'd get on to the kids and not get on to them and everybody would be mad at me and i'd be the bad guy and i asked them not to make me be the bad guy <laughs> Yeah, this was like one of the first days that it really dawned on me that I, they weren't really depending on me to do anything. I mean, this was the very end. And uh, they were like, man, he's going to, 
<laughs> God bless him. He's a great guy, but chances are he's not as committed as we are right now. But I was. I would have done my job, um, but it didn't insult me. You know, it was just that they needed to. Know, they knew they needed to step up and take my place, and so uh, I was beginning to realize. And I was sitting there thinking, and this is when I started thinking, why am I in these meetings for like an hour? I'm not even going to be here. We'd be talking about stuff, and I, I would just want to go, I'm not even going to be here next year. Why do you? <laughs> why am I here? Can't I just go home now? Uh, but anyway, and then, you know, the being the bad guy thing. Uh, and I would ask him. I was always, you know, I tried to be nice. You know, but I, if I needed to be the bad guy, I could be, I could, I know, I know that's hard to believe. No, you guys are like Chris. You are so sweet. You are so nice. Uh, no, no, I'm a, I'm a bad man. I'm a bad. <laughs> if I needed to say things that needed to be said, I could. I'll say it. You, y'all keep messing with me. And uh, but anyway, that was my whole part of the testing session. And um, and I'm the testing coordinator. <laughs> that was all that I did. Was that part. So. Um, Anyway, uh, they're watching me. They're keeping an eye on me, make sure I don't mess up, I guess, here in the last few days. Um, anyway, uh, you know, I was going to tell you guys about when I started teaching. Uh, and when I got my job, remember I told you I was amazed that anybody would hire me. It was a miracle that the guy hired me. Uh, I think that was his, as a matter of fact, the reason he was taking that test is that was his first principal's job. It's probably his last principal's job. Um, but anyway, when he hired me, uh, I got to, uh, you know, I got me an apartment and all that kind of stuff. And of course, I didn't have any money. You know, you don't get paid for like two months uh, when you first start teaching. And we didn't get paid anything back then anyway. So I got my first apartment and I show up to uh, work, you know, three or four days early. And I ask him, you know, is there anything that I could be doing, you know, maybe to get ready for uh, school to start? He said, oh, no, don't worry about it. You just show up, you know, just show up. That's all you got to do. And so the day I was supposed to show up, of course, I was coaching and stuff. I was doing all that stuff before then. But anyway, the day, the day I showed up, I walked in my classroom and we had this school that didn't have doors. Uh, we had like this big building and they had this idea back then, I guess it was in the 80s, that you should have schools without doors. You know, I guess we were, you know, we didn't want to hem the kids in or something. But anyhow, now that... <laughs> That was the stupidest thing. Like you look look back at that and go, now who in, um, who in the world would come up with the idea to have a school with no doors? And, and like you'd be over there teaching your class and you could hear the other teacher over there teaching their class and you could hear the next teacher down teaching. There were no doors. And that was my first introduction to educational experts at work, they they would they would have these theories, and this is how children learn, and this is how you should do things, and then they would the end result would be things like a classroom with no no door on it. Um, we didn't have any doors; we just had partitions. So he shows me my room, and I had like three desks, and they were tore up, and I had a chalkboard, uh, like one piece of chalk, a teacher's desk, and no chair. That was it. Um, so that's one thing I learned right off, especially back then. Um, teachers were pretty much thieves. They'd take everything you had. I mean, because it was like hyenas had gone over a carcass in my room. Um, so I started going through the school, trying to find materials and find desks to put in my room. And I kind of scrounged enough stuff together by the time school started, you know, to set the kids, the 33 kids I had in every single classroom uh, with no door. Uh, yeah, today, if you're a new teacher, you go through days and days of orientation. You get mentors, you get all this. I had I had a person that was supposed to be my mentor teacher and she was busy doing her stuff and there wasn't any kind of program, there wasn't any kind of, you know, here's what all you need to know. It was just go, <laughs> get it, go, get in there and go. And uh, I went in there and I told her, I said, I don't have any desk. And, uh, and she had a son about my age. <laughs> So she knew how to handle me. And she was like, look, you're just going to have to go around the school and just ask everybody if they have any extra desk in their room. And I spent the whole day going around to every single classroom. And, you know, looking back on it, that helped me meet everybody. You know. And it probably, it probably wasn't the best introduction to me going around and scrounging, but 
That's, well, that's probably what they had to do when they started teaching. Because I'm not kidding, that's exactly what my room looked like. There wasn't anything in my room. So that was how I got started the first few days and uh, kind of went from there. Um, learned a lot that first year about teaching. And I can tell you, we didn't get trained like these teachers that get trained now. Uh, they have a whole lot more training now about what uh, what to expect and what's going to go on. The only thing that I remember really learning, the thing that I learned that helped me the most was when I was doing my student teaching, my mentor teacher told me three things. He said, don't get your honey where you get your money. Uh, he said, don't, well, he said, you need to be nice to the cafeteria workers and you need to be nice to the custodians. And that was three things I learned that helped me make it through the next 29 years. Have a good day. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Over all that time and all the things I learned and all the things that I learned to call it and all the stuff, that was what, that, that, that really did stick. When he told me those three things, he knew what he was talking about. That, that guy was getting ready to retire and he knew exactly what he was talking about and I learned that from him. Smart man. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, remember how I was telling you that I was the first one here in the morning and I got here an hour before work and started? Well, I just wanted you to look around in the parking lot here. There's the parking lot and Looks like I'm going to be the uh, last one to leave. Uh, well, actually, I'm just kidding. Uh, the front's where everybody parks. I'm back here where the buses park, so uh, I'm getting out of here. I'm not really the last guy leaving. See ya. Very clever. Very What a, what a, what a clever fellow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, what, why it struck me to do that. But really, in all reality, I was usually one of the last, I was always one of the first people to get there, one of the last guys to leave. And that was from coaching because one of the other things that I learned is do not be the last one. I mean, they would tell us as young coaches, every old coach would look at us and go, now don't you be the last guy to get here. And don't you be the first guy to leave. And they meant it. I mean, and so you, you would think, well, if all the coaches knew that, how would <laughs> we'd all be sitting there waiting on who's, who's going to leave? Who's going to leave? And really, what we were waiting on is for the head coach to go to look at us and go, "Guys, y'all need to leave. Go home. You know, whatever." Because we were all we didn't want to be the first one. So it was a contest. Thanks for watching, guys. I've had a good. It's beautiful out here today. The birds are chirping. My chickens were out there making noises a while ago. It's a weekend. I'm not going fishing. It's just a nice day. It's a little hot. But it's a nice day. Y'all have a good day.